Mm -hmm. um, the next commissions on the list is uh, the school supplies for EOR. Uh, Julie's going to come sometime this week and put a back on the back row. So any school supplies you can pick up, you can put them there and she'll drop those off when school starts. Um, Wednesday, um, every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we do our prayer concern and Bible study. Mm -hmm. So this week we'll be finishing up chapter 9 and um, starting in chapter 10. And that's here in the fellowship hall, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, well, speaking of that, uh, everybody needs to go look at our, our gigantic screen now. Um, the church invested in our Bible study by putting up this beautiful screen, and there's going to be another a whiteboard. That way, the picture is bigger, and uh, it, it's not on the table, so it doesn't move. So just take a chance to gander at it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it'll be something too we can utilize in the church if mm -hmm. we ever need it. So we're really excited about that. Um, July 30th, that will be at 11 o'clock. Lunch at the, lunch at George's. And then following that will be the, um, did I do that right? That's I'm July sorry. 18th. The 18th, mm -hmm. sorry, I, I skipped over. That's this Tuesday. Yep, so lunch at George's, following that is the Senior Citizen Mission. And then here's July 30th, Sunday at 11 o'clock. This will be our last day with Pastor Tabitha. So please, everyone come and um, we, it's gonna be a sad day, but happy for Pastor Tabitha. And happy for who was coming here, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, to, I'm two hours away and I'm, I'm moving home closer to my parents and they get older in age and I'm able to help with them. And I'm excited about a new chapter and that's what's happening here too. So mm -hmm. everybody needs to be in prayer for who's going to be appointed here and the direction of the church. Um, so it's going to be awesome. Everybody just needs to have faith. Hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Yep, and also on the 30th, changes everywhere. Right after church, we are going to vote the old city mint um, sign that we have out front. We're voting to um, tear that down. The, the plaque in there for the, who that was made for were put into the memorial garden is what we're proposing. Um, and then we are looking into buying a new improved sign to replace that. Um, that sign was put in that location as kind of in an odd location because the road, the way the road used to be a long time ago, and now things have changed with the aligning roads, and so we were kind of thinking maybe a new sign kind of where we put all of our Bible study flyers. Um, where the banners are. Right and all mm -hmm. of that, kind of in that location. So um, we'll have more details how it is actually collected, the details on the new sign so we can share those and then have that vote right after church. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, you know, this is just kind of a little bleep, but talk to me or Dusty and we'll explain, like, the sign is unfixable, we can't get the lights to do like it should, um, and the, the newer one will be a little bit better for people to see it, so, so forth and so on. So if you have concerns, please talk to us. We want to hear those concerns. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we want to give it two weeks to talk about it and then We'll go another direction. Yeah, that was a great point I forgot to mention about this on um, repairable. Mm -hmm. um, so also on the 30th, which is going to be a really big day, um, we'll have the fifth Sunday hymn sing, and that'll be at Jerusalem Church. And again, Dusty has uh, put the address mm -hmm. in, the, in the brochure here. And if you want to go, but you do not want to drive, tell me, I will come get you. Because I tell you, this is going to be loads and loads of fun. It will be. The last one was so good, and I know this one's going to be just as good. All right, moving on, um, August 12th at 9.30, the men's breakfast here in the fellowship hall. Uh, August 13th, that will be the second Sunday. We come and do um, refreshments and coffee and all before church services. And then Tuesday, August 15th, um, from 6 o'clock to 8, that will be the next small admin council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's welcome to join that as well. Right. Any other business? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. As we center our hearts and our minds for worship, if you will, 
Pray with me this morning as we open ourselves up to God. Mighty God, everything you do reveals your glory and majesty. Open our eyes to see what you're doing in our lives. Let us marvel at your good gifts and your wise provision, your acts, for their name. We cannot quite comprehend the number of blessings you pour out on us from day to day. And we gather today around your name. And we pray that you would fill our hearts and our minds and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is on page 841 in your hymnals. We'll be doing 1 through 8 and then flipping over and doing 33 through 40. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are, are those, those who keep God's testimonies, who seek God with their whole heart. Who also do no wrong, but walk in God's ways. You, you have, have commanded, commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I then shall I not, not be put, put to shame, shame having my eyes fixed on all your all commands. Your I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will, I will observe, observe your statutes. Oh, oh forsake me not utterly. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give, Give me understanding that I may keep, keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanity, and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, for your ordinances are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness give me life. If you would now stand as we join our voices on page 451. Be thou my vision.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In Christ, you are forgiven. Gracious and righteous is the Lord our God. You are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. Will you please continue your prayer with us? Lord, we have gathered here at your house. We come to worship none but you, and we worship you in spirit and in truth. There is no way to God the Father but through the Son. Jesus Christ. God, continue teaching us the truth of your love and the high cost already born for our sake. Lord, keep us ever closer to you, especially in times of trials where our future seems uncertain. When we say we put our trust and faith in you, Let us act as if we do. 
May you be present in the many things going on with our family and the family of God. It may be with our health, both physical and mental. It may be the fears or the trials that come of marriages and relationships, parenting, recovering from addiction, or there are so many more. If we have not heard them with our ears shared Wednesday nights or before worship, or whether they are said at all, Lord, we know that you continue to be active in these situations. And Lord, may we leave the burdens that were never really ours to carry in your care. <coughs> As we pray in one voice the prayer that your son taught us, our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning for that divineness in God is Seek Ye First, which is found on page 405.
Bless those who have given them and also upon these gifts, that they may be a testimony to how awesome you are. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of meditation is I am thine, O Lord. Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. 
Isaac was 60 years old when Rebecca gave birth to him. The boy grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved Jacob. Once when, <clears throat> once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished, and he said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? So Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, it's Keith's gun. All right. Oh, it's about to fall That's <laughs> 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 When he told them many things and parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. <coughs> some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But then when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked them. So other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. <coughs> Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling along the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But once they have, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorn refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it and bears it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Speak the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to do something odd today. Okay. <laughs> coming down here. Good. Preacher's coming out of the pulpit. Right there. Right. <laughs> so, I've been here for six years, and I've probably said it about a thousand times. That's my favorite scripture. I think the whole Bible is my favorite scripture. Amen. Amen. But there are some scriptures that I, they're just so you know, rich with all kinds of meaning and thought processes, and the Spirit opens them up. And it's amazing what the Spirit can do because the Word is a living, breathing. It's not stagnant, dead words on the page. Amen? Amen? So we're going to talk a little bit about the parable of the sower. So the first thing I want to, I want to kind of mention to you is preparedness is very important. Being prepared and preparing are two very important things. I cannot stress that enough. But we know it can also be overdone. Amen? We all know the person that likes to plan to death, right? Likes to know what's going to happen every minute of every day. It's a hard thing, but, but preparedness and being prepared are important, and they are things to remember in light of today's scripture. A little word about the sower. 
One thing that we have a tendency to miss in the scripture because we go right to the soil is what the sower is doing. Now, we all can agree that the seeds are the word of God, right? We can agree on that. But what is amazing is the liberal, the, the liberty that the sower takes with the seed. That's something the people of Jesus' time would go, have they lost their mind? We lost that because we had loaves and other gardens where we can go and get more seeds, right? If the seeds don't work or we just leave them out in the sun or they, they become not, we just go get them. Or we can cheat and buy the little plants, right? Anybody like to cheat? I like to cheat. I'm not patient enough for seeds. I, you know, I like little plants. But let's put that out of our mind today. When Jesus said that he was sowing in different places, the original hearers would say he's crazy because they had saved the seeds from last year's crop, and these were life. These were how they were going to eat. This is how they were going to make a living. First, for somebody who just willy-nilly throws seeds out, blew their minds. So I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward. The word of God is overabundantly sown in the word. And we become sowers when we take up the mantle of Christ and call ourselves Christians. And we become the sowers. We sow the seed. Now the word, the seeds, don't come from us. Because if they did, this would be easier. Alright? If we created God in our own image, we would make it a lot easier, which is unfortunately what's taking place today. But the word of God is hard. But we become sowers of that seed, and everywhere we go, we sow that seed. And sometimes when we sow those seeds, they are not going to always fall on people who are receptive. When we sow that seed, there's always not going to be this immediate accepting of what you are saying. And there's going to be some frustration, frustration on our part. There is nothing like you trying to help someone who don't want help, but they say they want help. That is a very frustrating thing to be in. It's like saying, <coughs> <coughs> Tear it down. You gotta allow me to, to 
toil that soil to, to break it up and it is painful but it is so worth it brothers and sisters to let go of the hate and the anger and the things that we hold on to like those burdens like i said last sunday that are not ours when we allow those to go away and we are now receptive to god we've entered the second stage of the soil the soil has been tilled and is now receptive so when the seed falls on us the word of god oh man we're excited to get that seed because we've already gone through a lot of hard work and now that seed has fallen into our souls and we are excited and we say god i'm going to be all about you and i'm going to be on fire for you every day and oh my gosh i make a promise to you that i'll never ever sin but i'm gonna try real hard god not to sin and then what happens is it looks good on the surface. We have this little plant because we didn't cheat. We ain't cheating right now. We grew up from the seed and it looks great, but if you come underneath, you can see the roots. The roots are in poor shape. Because what we did is we at once were excited about the Word of God and we became excited about the Word of God, but we did what some people do. They work so hard to get the soil ready, then they plant the seed, and then they get tired of the garden. So we just. So what happens is instead of loving that ground and, and nurturing that ground and putting all kinds of manure on it, which we know what that is, and all going through all this stuff and, and watering it and making sure that the roots go deep, there is such thing as growing the plant and not the roots found that out recently. But with people who live this life, they think that they wear a gold chain around their neck with a cross on them, they have faith and the Lord's Prayer written somewhere in their house and even pointed by their grandmother, that that makes them a Christian. And guess what happens with these type of Christians? The first storm, the first rain, the first flood, they went out. Are so on fire for God, but they forgot there's still work to do. Even when you come to Christ, you have to take that word and you have to dig deep all the way to China. It's not just about coming to church and hearing a couple of, of songs and, and prayers. And it's about learning it because that is how we're going to battle the next soil. The weeds. Now, if y'all ever have had a garden, if you've ever had flowers, if you've ever had anything in your life, it seems like weeds are magical. I don't get weeds. Weeds are terrifying to me. You can weed the soil, go back next morning, and there are weeds, and you're like, where did they come from? But the key thing is that third soil, that, that weedy soil, that thorny soil, we can plant, we can till our hearts, we can invite that word in, we can seek deep, but if you are still living in sin, if you are still having one foot with God and one foot in sin, this does not work. This is called riding the fence and this is called lukewarm. And if you remember, Jesus said, I'll spit you out if you are lukewarm. You cannot say I am a new creation and still live as the old person. You cannot say I follow God and yet six days a week you look like Satan's best friend. And that's hard to hear. But it takes work. So if you know that your soil is sinful, then you've got to be really astute to go out there and spend time in your garden every day pulling them weeds out. Because if you don't, what will happen? It takes over. And I, how many of you have ever worked in a tobacco field? All right. You know, morning glories. How fast they grow. What happens when you're at the back of a harvester and you get something with that vine wrapper around it? That pulls you off on the harvester, doesn't it? We call them something else where I grow up. I can't say the word in church. <laughs> 
Lil Ronald knows what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 he won't. He's like, yeah, you can't say that word in church. But I've heard it over a good time. But let me tell you, that is how fast they will grow. And they will take over your garden in a heartbeat. And before you know it, it chokes off any kind of fruit, any kind of resource that you put in that soil is now in those leaves. And it will choke your life off. And, and what happens when our gardens get overgrown, some of us say, it's a lost cause. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, can't, I can't do this. It seems overwhelming, right? I've been there. <laughs> Started flower garden up and was like, you know, ain't got time. That's the problem. You cannot say that you love God if you do not make time to do God's work and God's reading of his holy word. There is such an important thing that happens at church that I just feel like we're missing. It's called putting into practice what we learn. We don't come here just to feel good. I'm giving you tools to put in your toolbox every day. Every time I see Tina, every time I see Dusty, any of you, I'm giving you a tool and saying, this is going to be handy when your life go up. Or you're going to or do or whatever I have to call this week, right? Waiters, can't take waiters out of me. Everybody's a sweetie pie, darling. But it's important for you every day to till, to work, to water, and to nurture. And when we do this, when we realize, okay, the only way I am going to survive, the only way that I'm going to continue to be in Christ is to be vigilant. That fourth soil comes into play. Let me tell you, when God sees you keeping that garden, he starts to plant little blessings in there. And you're like, where did that come from? It starts to grow. And then all of a sudden you'll notice another little, not a weed now. I'm talking about weed. God will plant weeds. You're like, wow. <coughs> See, God will continue to add to your garden because if you are good with a little, sometimes God gives you Today, the soil parable is important for us because we do live in a world where all four soils are in live working order. And I can't tell you what soil you are. I can't tell you if you're in between or if you're, if you're one soil or the other because that is between you and God. But I will say this. It's important. Because knowing is half the battle. And then with God, what you think is worthless and overwhelming, God will systematically help you. Just kind of take the bottle, open it up, and take a drink. Amen. morning our hymn of consecration is wonderful words of life page 600 please stand in your able to join our prayer.
workmanship done in his name. May he give us light to guide us, courage to support us, and love to unite us, now and forever. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.